Hello, my name is Dr. Jose Luis Ruiz, and I am the director of Los Angeles Institute of Clinical Dentistry, and I have been in private practice for over 20 years in the movie studio district of Los Angeles. And I tell you, I've been in the same location for over 20 years, so I have had the opportunity to see some of the treatment that I did 20 years ago, and I can see what works, what doesn't, the complications. And uh, as a real clinician, is it's a very exciting time today because there's so many advances in dentistry that I can implement in my practice and see my patients uh, get healthier and, and benefit by all this knowledge. In regards to implant dentistry, I have been placing implants for over a decade and restoring implants for almost two decades. And I have found that really my preference as much as possible is, is going to be to place implants on natural bone. I know uh, from, from my perspective that seems to be the most predictable approach. There is no question that there are wonderful advances in bone grafting and in many cases my patients will need that and I, I refer my patients out for that to be done by experts in, in, in that area. And, uh, and the results have been, you know, fairly acceptable, but again, grafted sites tend to be less predictable. I have found that shorter and narrow implants tend to be uh, very predictable with my patients and um, so that's really my opinion on what implant dentistry is, that what we have learned in implant dentistry or what I have learned in implant dentistry. When it comes to aesthetic dentistry, I think the profession has learned a lot over the past 20 years. Um, we started with incredibly conservative veneers and direct bonding, and then we went through a cycle of getting more and more aggressive in our preparations with the belief that we would have better aesthetic results. And over the years, we have learned that that aggressive type of preparations for, uh, or, or our, for our restorations were, in fact, uh, undesirable and led to undesirable results. So we are coming back to doing uh, dentistry on a, or aesthetic dentistry in the most conservative fashion and that makes me very very happy because that is what I really like to do stay above the gums keep the patient's gums healthy don't grind a lot of teeth use all the modern materials that we have for the benefit of our patients in regards to adhesive materials I think that our profession has learned a lot we have realized that uh, Self-fetch bonding systems are, in fact, very, very good. Uh, a decade ago, we thought the self-fetch bonding systems, which were at their infancy at the time, we thought they, were, were, they may not be as good as total edge, but uh, latest research has shown that they can compete in success and longevity or maybe exceed the success and longevity of total edge while making bonding procedures more predictable less sensitive and, and, um, and longer lasting. I, I'm in particular very, very uh, uh, impressed with Clearfill SC Protect because it's a material that it has a disinfectant and it, it leads to low sensitivity and very long durability of dentin bonding. I think a profession, especially in adhesive dentistry, has a very exciting future. I mean, the, the move towards uh, digital impressions, the move towards uh, CAD CAM systems to manufacture restorations is a very positive thing. I think it's in its infancy, but I think it's going to take momentum and it's going to help our profession very much. Um, dental materials continue to improve. We uh, sometimes, uh, with the effort to try new things, sometimes we ignore things that are tried and true, like, like uh, press ceramics, which is, are excellent, and I don't see that they need to be replaced by a stronger porcelain, but um, definitely I have my eyes open to the latest things that are coming, and some of them look very exciting. I had the pleasure of sharing with you some of my beliefs and my philosophy on restoring patients who have badly broken down dentitions. I, this presentation is directed especially for general dentists who have a percentage of patients in their practices just like this and sometimes we don't know what to do and we see them go downhill without being able to treat them 
I think the approach of using direct composite to restore those patients, to stabilize those patients, is a very important approach. I think that understanding that the, the using implants is very, very important, but we can use implants in a wiser way, maybe less implants and healthy bones, smaller diameters, so we can uh, do it at lower cost and still give the patient what they need, which is stability and acceptable aesthetics. When I talk about using direct composite or even adhesive dentistry with porcelain, instead of traditional crown and bridge, a lot of people are surprised and they wonder if the durability will be the same as traditional crown and bridge. And uh, I can tell you that my personal experience, I've been doing this for over a decade. I have not prepped a crown in over a decade. And I can tell you the durability of those restorations e either exceeds or is equal to a PFM. It's not going to be compared to gold. Gold, without a doubt, is, 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 is more durable. Uh, unfortunately, our patients don't want gold, especially here in Hollywood. But definitely, bonded dentistry has the benefit of not requiring as much, as much tooth reduction. And if we use it correctly, we can keep the margins of our restorations above the gum. And I believe that even if the restoration didn't last as long, as a PFM crown or even a gold crown, I can tell you the tooth will last longer because we will not traumatize it, we will not cut it as much, and we will keep the gums above, the margins above the gums, and those teeth will live longer. As you know, I practice in this movie district of Los Angeles, and most of my patients are in the movie industry. The interesting thing is the economy has had an effect on everyone. And I find patients to be more reluctant to do expensive dentistry. And they're often trying to find, even people who are very successful, they're trying to find more conservative options. I think people more and more are learning that those aggressive veneer preparations and crown preparations had very negative effects. They have friends and they have family and they have people who who they have, have, have seen gone through very uh, hellish experiences of those restorations all breaking and falling apart and eating root canals. And they, they more and more ask me straight to my face and say, is this going to last? Are you going to grind my teeth aggressively? They don't want that. They want conservative approach. So um, I, in regards to the color of teeth, I think people still want very white. And I try to discourage it as much as possible because I think... Uh, toilet bowl white is very unnatural, and I, I, I really don't want to do it. So um, we try to do go, go as white as possible without going into the unnatural area. I think that it is a very good thing that Hollywood and everybody in the movie industry is concerned about teeth. I think that we cannot look at a movie star or people in Hollywood who does not have nice looking healthy teeth. And, and I like that because ultimately our patients throughout the country and throughout the world are getting more and more concerned about their teeth. I have many friends, I lecture in Europe a lot, I have many friends who are telling me that Europe is catching up. Little by little they are getting interested about the way their teeth look. They want their teeth to look whiter, straighter, and so, so in, for at least in this particular aspect, I think Hollywood and the movies is, is helping the health, at least the dental health of our patients. So what do I do for a hobby? Well, I tell you, I'm actually a musician. I'm a lead singer and guitarist uh, at a band, and this band is a dentist band. So everybody in this band is a dentist, and we have a ball playing, and uh, I think it's a great hobby. So uh, certainly dentistry is very artistic. Music is very artistic. I'm an artistic person, and I love doing that. Uh, in addition to that, I'm taking flying lessons. So if one of these days, I'll have a pilot's license. I don't know if that's going to be dangerous or not. It's a lot of fun. And, um, and uh, really, dentistry is my hobby. I, I spend most of my waking time thinking about dentistry and how to make things easier and better and more practical for myself and for my colleagues. For more education programs, visit the Guide Institute at www.guidedental.com.